Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We are your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello and welcome to the, another episode of the I Create Daily podcast, a movement for creators serious about their art. I'm Devani Alderson. And I'm Leora Alderson. And our guest today is all the way from Finland. It is Paivi Erola. And Paivi is a former IT information technologist expert and professor turned full-time artist. Pivey is a prolific artist with at least five courses teaching students around the world to learn to use both sides of their brain, logic and feeling through art. Welcome Pivey. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Not a professor though, not, not, not so high, but okay. I have a long career in IT business, yeah. Okay, yes. I love the picture on, on your um, website under your about. Uh, you're teaching in the dry, static environment of IT or whatever universe, whatever classroom environment you're in, and then you're pointing to where you go in the future. So tell us about that journey. How did you go from being in the IT and the logic side of it uh, and migrate into becoming a full-time artist? Yeah, you know, when I, of course, when I was a teenager and a child, I, I dreamed about being an artist, but then I thought, that uh, I don't make much money as an artist. So I decided that I go where the men, men go <laughs> and start studying software engineering. I ha and I had a long career in, in, in software engineering. I managed IT projects and, and did all kind of stuff. But, but you know, I think that uh, we all have a moment in life when you, act when you have to stop and think that what you really want out of your life. And to me, I, 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 I remembered that as a child, I saw this uh, title called industrial, in, industrial designer. Mm. And I thought it, it was a really fancy name and I didn't, re I didn't understand at all what that person would do. I was living in northern Karelia, uh, near the Russian border, and, uh, and uh, the school was uh, far in the south. And uh, I, I didn't know what that kind of person would, would uh, do. But of course, when I had already moved to the south, when I studied computer engineering and I my work was there then of course I got more knowledge about industrial design and, and I thought that I'm going to start studying that mm -hmm. just before that I had all, also started blogging and uh, and uh, sharing all my creative projects first mm -hmm. there was just knitting but then I soon moved to paper crafts and then to to art and uh, then I, I take, take, took a jump that I thought that it was a giant jump to leave my day job for a couple of years and study as an industrial designer. Mm. And that was, that was a brilliant time and I had more time for blogging too and I had all kinds of creative projects. And uh, after that, uh, I, s I went back to, uh, not, not to the same job, I started working as a service designer and I, I worked with websites and, and designed websites and, uh, and, and services. Nice. And uh, during that, uh, the creativity called me again and... Uh, and I, I continued blogging, and I think that's the main main story about me that I have been blogging uh, more than ten years. Wow! Wow! Amazing! Yeah, blogging about art, uh, approximately nine years or something. And wow. I was I was a very beginner in art because you know that's a that's a funny thing that even if I. Uh, 
created a lot of art as a child and as a teenager. Uh, when I had about uh, 10 years or so, when I didn't create any, any, anything uh, by drawing or painting, I kind of lost those skills and I've kind of lost those, that connection. Right. But prevent me share, starting sharing stuff that I had done because I've all, all, always uh, enjoyed sharing through internet and, and uh, then I s soon realized that I have some kind of audience <laughs> and that was surprising because first I, start, I, I thought that it's kind of personal diary or personal blog and, and then in 2000 10, I have to check it. Yeah, 2010 was a was a really important thing that uh, that uh, somebody said to me, or I read about some uh, somewhere. I read somewhere that I should uh, establish an email list, mm. and uh, in, and that was really scary. And actually, it. it felt a very uncomfortable thing to do but uh, when I had studied engineering I had do done a lot of uncomfortable stuff so I yeah. thought that somebody else knows this better than me that I will establish this list and mm -hmm. if there's one or two subscribers that's okay but I was surprised that I was getting those sub subscribers and, and first it felt really awkward to send those emails. But then uh, uh, when the years went by, I uh, thought about that m more and more, that I have kind of potential there in my email list. And then in 2013, so four years ago, I made a plan plan that I'm going to uh, grow my email list to a certain number uh, within nine months and mm. then I'm going to leave my day job mm. and, uh, <laughs> yeah that uh, that when I think that it's actually quite ridiculous that that uh, the jump from the engineer to designer felt so big back then because the jump was much bigger when I started supporting myself. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so that was yeah. my plan and I did exactly that. So, but I think that uh, regular blogging that I had been, I had done for so many years, uh, that's what had really had take me here. And it's not only about that, that, um, that I would gather an audience like that. It's also that my readers helped me. That, yeah. Yeah. Way that, that when I posted something, when I experimented something and posted something, and then there were posts that got no comments at all, and then there were posts that got tens of comments. And, uh, and uh, that way I kind of find, found uh, my direction that what's there that, What's there in me that fascinates others and benefits others? Yeah, that's and, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the main thing, I think. Yeah, yeah there's so many um, great points about your story. I think the one that really stands out for me is um, don't let be being uncomfortable stop you, yeah. uh, especially stop you from learning and growing. And yeah, take the leap you know, into the unknown, but be prepared when you do. You know, like you didn't just rashly leave the corporate world and the security without a safety net. You know, you had already done lots of building, you know, of a separate secondary safety net of your own before mm -hmm. you finally took that leap. Yeah, yeah. You know, always when trying new things, uh, we should never listen to our intuition. <laughs> our intuition <laughs> always says, tell us that no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good point. I think I, I tend to think of it as distinguishing like the voice of fear, you know, the negative voice, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. from the voice of vision, you know, yeah, which is yeah, more exactly. to me the intuition. Yeah. yeah, definitely don't listen to that voice of fear. Yeah. Yeah, Could you exactly. talk a little bit about what you're currently doing? So you left, you, you dove into the art career full time in 2013. So what are some of the things you're doing now that take up most of your time in running your business and doing the art part? 
Yeah, it was actually three years ago, 2014, when, nice. when my nine-month plan came true. Awesome. So, um, uh, my idea uh, was that I'm going to uh, I'm going to build self-study classes because I can't mm. speak, speak English. I can write English, but I can't speak. Oh, you're speaking so, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and back then I thought that uh, if I produce these self-study classes, they will, be, they will be my thing. And I didn't think about uh, so much about creating fine art or such. I just thought about these classes because I have been teaching all my life and teaching mm -hmm. has always been an important part of me. So I, I kind of uh, saw myself in a t continuing the teaching career, but, but in a totally different field. Yeah. But then um, I soon realized that, uh, that uh, my strength is somewhere <laughs> in, in different things. That even if I enjoy writing and I enjoy literal work, actually the uh, thing why people have been reading my blog was to... Uh, create some kind of friendship with me and mm. if I wanted to uh, make that frank friendship stronger then I I need to come out and start speaking and and uh, you know start connecting in a real in in a real reality and in a real way yeah. so very soon uh, it uh, it uh, felt that I want to have classes that uh, have uh, interact more interaction and where I can really guide uh, people how to create art and and not only the technical stuff but also how to connect with imagination as well. And I feel mm -hmm. that this kind of uh, interaction is essential. Uh, as growing as an in growing as an artist, and it it has also brought a much more meaning uh, to to my daily life because I'm working alone at home, and and when I'm connecting, I don't feel so alone. So yes. so that's important. But um, uh, I could say a, a few things about what I actually do. So. Yeah. One of my specialties is to uh, teach people to uh, draw freely, draw from, from the imagination. Mm. And, uh, and that's uh, where I've developed a lot of methods. And that's where my engineering background steps in, that every time my artistic side uh, uh, does something, my engineering side, uh, side asks that, why did you do that? <laughs> what did you do that? Is there some kind of system behind all that? So I've developed ways to draw from imagination and to get looser because I think that most people who pursue art and who start practicing art, uh, they soon realize that uh, in art it's really important to liberate yourself, to let go and loosen up and get in touch with your imagination because you know when we create art we want to create something unique and that imagination steps in uh, then yeah. and um, another thing that i'm really enthusiastic about and i've also developed a six-step method um, is my coaching program called the exploring artist where mm. I guide uh, emerging artists find their true passion, what's, what's their true passion, passion in art and also in design. Because, you know, for many, when they create, they're actually more into design than into creating art. They want to create illustrations or they want to create patterns or, or more, more design. Uh, stuff, even if they don't uh, at first realize that. So I guide people to find their, uh, their artistic voice and also put words into that. And that's uh, kind of funny if you think that when I started, I thought that I'm going to uh, uh, build self-study classes only because I, my English is so bad. And now I'm actually... Uh, helping people to find words for their visuals 
in English. Yes, so, so beautiful. <laughs> but, totally different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you're doing great though, and yeah. it's it's such a cool story, and and I, I'm sure it inspires a lot of your students to be like, okay, well, you came this far with your background in engineering, which is a whole other side of your brain that you're using, and um, now you're teaching people how to discover their artistic voice, and that's just that's incredible. Yeah, you know, that jokes about Finnish computer engineers and how stiff they are. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know what they've learned. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the same school. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful balancing. So how do you um, kind of like, do you have arguments with your own? Like, do you, especially fascinated about how you, a couple of things. One is many people are disconnected from their passion. So that's, you know, your course helping them to connect with that is really important and significant. And I'm sure you must see some beautiful examples of people's creativity coming alive more fully mm -hmm. once they discover their passion and, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. And because I, I focus on visual, visual artists and visual people uh, often, and that's what's happened to me too, is that visuals are sometimes uh, there that the, that you actually get the connection with the visuals, but then when you start talking about your work, it's, it's extremely difficult and and almost embarrassing. And I think that that prevents many visual artists who are very skillful. That prevents them from sharing because. Uh, you know, it's so personal also, and yeah. they are so deeply connected with that passion through the visuals that it mm -hmm. feels so bad to to reveal all that. And yeah. then sometimes I also have students that, uh, uh, or participants uh, that uh, uh, have very high understanding of aesthetics but they lack the technical skills and how to use their hands to connect with that mm -hmm. uh, high, high level understanding. Yeah. And that's also where, where I help people that nice. uh, to how to uh, get all the, the little tricks that visuals have to, to express what you want to express. Helping them develop the mind brain connection. So, the mind brain to the fingers mm -hmm. and the hands. So, yeah. what an amazing um, balance of technical and creative. We talk about that a lot because uh, both Laura and I are um, we're like generalists. So, we know a little bit about this and that, but we excel in the creative side. And so, having that balance for artists, and especially a lot of artists where when you're starting out and you're um, you know what you want to convey and you might have a great sense of style like that Ira Glass video I don't know if you've seen it but he talks about how you know that you have the style and you know something's there but it's just not great yet mm -hmm. and so it seems like you have that perfect balance to help people bridge the gap of practical technical skill and how to hone their creativity so that they can actually get their message across mm -hmm. That's also where when you share your work, that helps because mm -hmm. uh, you know then you then you really get the get the response to and you yes. you put more effort in into your work. That's right, so and you know of that too. Yes, and we've spoken with other artists and have this awareness of how the, there's a sensitivity um, and fear of putting your work into the world, mm -hmm. lest it be judged or lest people not like it. Um, and yet, you know, we also have to, as artists to creatives, develop a little bit of a thick skin. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a fine balance, listening to our critics, especially those who are our fans, and listening to their feedback so that we can grow and improve while simultaneously doing work that we love to do and value, mm -hmm. even in spite of the critics, right? So that's mm -hmm. a fine line. Well, one of our mutual friends, Eva Nikunen, who yeah. told us about you in the first place, um, she's a fantasy artist of fantastic caliber. And I think one of the ways that she tells about her art and what it means to her is through story. So she creates stories 
about her pieces of art and she's kind of build, building an entire world. So for those who have uh, a shyness around telling their personal emotions about it, it would seem like writing stories mm -hmm. or even captions mm. about their art could, uh, could really mm. be really helpful. Yes. Yes. So you, what now one of our, um, one of the people in our audience, when we told them we were introducing, we were interviewing you today, wanted us to ask you, what do you call your style of art and how did you arrive at that beyond what you've shared about your journey so far? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, my style of art is I, I create kind of romantic art. I create kind of romantic scenes from, from the other world, I would say. Yeah. And I also, also like to combine abstract and realistic together. But I think that um, the best uh, definition, which, is, which doesn't come uh, in the field of art, but from my personal story, is that, that um, when I started sharing my work, and even already when I, when I started sharing my knitting, where, where I started blogging, um, Finnish people wasn't so keen on my work. <laughs> because you know, Finnish um they they like very uh simple stuff and my work is very rich and full of stuff. Yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, and uh and that, I think that's one reason I found my audience mostly in, in the USA that uh that uh, there were enough people who loved colors and and the richness i think that my the best uh, word to, to describe my style it's the richness of colors and shapes and sometimes an overwhelming richness even and also uh, most of my work is connected with art history in some way so i get a lot of inspiration from the history of art and design Awesome. Yeah, I, mean, I noticed a, a post on your uh, Facebook timeline talking about the Van Gogh movie that's mm. coming out or is already out uh, shortly. And you did a, your own wonderful rendition mm -hmm. of, of the self-portrait concept. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's actually made without any reference photos. And, and I often create art like that, that I wow. don't use any reference photos, even if I create quite realistic Wow. And then often I, when I use re, uh, reference photos, I might create a lot uh, first uh, without those and then just bring some details with reference photos. Very well, cool. do you, so when you are working in that way and creating without reference photos, are you seeing the visual in your mind before it goes on canvas? Um, uh, I'm actually very much opposed to that. <laughs> so, of course, visual people see visual images, but I, I don't uh, overestimate them or overvalue them. I think that many have this problem that they overvalue the visuals they see in their dreams or, uh, or the visuals they see somewhere when they walk in the nature, in nature or or something like that but uh, you know when you create intuitively it's uh, more about seeing what appears on the paper than uh, than trying to compare the the image in your mind with the image that you're producing mm -hmm. and I have uh, kind of explained that to myself so that uh, that my creativity it is much more clever than uh, what I intentionally think. That my creativity takes information and all that uh, from several sources and mixes them together. And I think that's the nature of creativity to pick all kinds of associations and then mix them together. And, um, uh, and I think that it prevents and uh, locks that creativity if you try to copy something very, very into detail. And, 
And I've also tested that uh, the images in my mind, that how accurate are they? Are they like reference images that I can use? Yeah. And if I see that image, for example, a beautiful seascape or something, and then, then I start asking that, that uh, what color is that wave and how defined it is and what's the shape of it, I can't actually tell. So if I can't tell, how can I really copy it? Mm. So I don't think that's a successful way to create art, to try to copy one single image in, of, of mind. Yeah. Uh, I think that you should change the image uh, frequently while you're creating and, and uh, try to see what appears on the canvas and accept what appears there. Yeah, yeah. I was um, scrolling through your Instagram and as you were, ta you were talking about the creativity and mixing the styles and what happens and what intuitively comes out to the canvas and while scrolling through your images you have a huge array of style and you're very prolific with your creation. Do you have daily habits surrounding that? How do you... Are you, um, do you have rituals that uh, allow your intuition to blossom onto the canvas? Like, what, what is the process for that? Uh, the fact that I have so many <laughs> styles, so I can stretch my style to so many directions, is that I didn't actually think that I'm a good teacher if I can't do that. Mm. Because I think that, uh, you know, when, when, when people come to create and they ask for advice, I, I try to give the advice that fits them, that what they want to create uh, now. And I think that it's not, teaching is not about teaching my style for other people. It's about helping them to find things that inspire them. Mm -hmm. And often when people say that they want to find their style, it's often a mix up of many, many styles and many different sources of inspiration. Like and us. Mm -hmm. the, the main problem with many that they think that they ha have to fixate in something, that they have to label and fixate in something when actually uh, it's better to start combining all kinds of inspiration and bring unique your uniqueness out in that way so that's why i always uh, try to look for different styles and and of course because i'm a designer we are built trained for um, noticing all kinds of little things that make the style so that's also one, one thing. But uh, about the pra regular practices, of course, uh, I spend most of my days creating something, but often it's something like I'm editing videos or something. It's not, it's not painting what I create every day. But um, I think that the most important ritual is uh, that I take my dogs for a walk uh, mm. twice a day. Nice. So, so uh, that's my time to spend in my thoughts, especially in the mornings mm -hmm. when I plan the day. And I think that her, her walking or moving forward helps thoughts to move forward too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and that, I think that's uh, my main routine. Yeah. And then during that, I plan the program of the day. Of course, I have longer, long time plans and such, and I have weekly plans. But, but, I, but for that day, I, I, I plan that, and I kind of uh, imagine doing all that work so yeah. that when I get back home, I already know what button to press or what uh, color to to take uh, out. That I already know what I'm I'm doing, and I think yeah. that's a very important part of my my creativity and productivity, especially. Yeah, no, oh, that's an excellent point. We're all for that. We have dogs. We do the same thing, um, and it's it's one of the best ways to get unstuck. 
you know, mm -hmm. if someone is stuck and going through like mm -hmm. feeling uninspired or uh, even having whatever trouble in their life, it's just, it, ch it changes their physiology to go for a walk and breathe in nature. Although I cannot imagine walking <laughs> every day, twice a day in your winter time. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, we had, we just today, we had the first in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a bit sad day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, today, yeah. Yeah. October. This is October twenty sixth, two thousand seventeen. So you had your first. Yeah. So is that nor is nor is that normal about the normal like time for your first snow? I think it's a bit early in the south where I live. I live in very near Helsinki, the capital city. So, so I think it's a bit early, but about this time, yeah. Okay. Before we move on to learn more about your art business and the business of art one of the descriptors that came to mind for me when you were describing your style of art is a mystical romance of color. Yeah, that's well put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has, a, it has a, like you said, it's a romance, but then there's a, a mystical ethereal quality mm -hmm. to it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, to me that, you know, if you had the vision beyond the physical vision into the, you know, other realms, it seems somewhat like that otherworldly a bit. Mm, yeah, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, so on switching over to the art business side of your art business, what are some of the things that you do every day or what are the two or three things that you do in your business to make it successful for other people listening who want to do this? Yeah, so you have court. Sorry, let me interject for just a so I guess the one question too is separating for you because you have paintings that you sell and then you have the courses. So just talking about paintings for now, for those who don't have yeah. courses, what are the things that are most profitable and productive for you in your business of art, selling art, not the, and the courses will come later? Uh, I think uh, it uh, goes, I think it's very, the same thing for both actually, that um, the core thing, thing today is still blogging and sending sending my weekly emails that's the main thing yeah so for both of both of my business is to create relationships that way so i send weekly emails and i also block week weekly once a week and i take this extremely seriously uh, my blog posts are quite comprehensive all quite, also quite visual, and I also ha all, always have a theme for them. And, uh, and sometimes my students also help me to, to uh, have, have more visuals there. So I think that's the core thing. Uh, I don't have any daily routine uh, for business in that way that uh, other than walking the dogs, which serves that, but uh, my uh, selling and marketing is based on weekly uh, intervals. So I have a certain processes that I do weekly. Uh, I uh, post several times in, in social media during the week. And, uh, but uh, but uh, my blogging is, uh, weekly blogging is still the most essential thing. And then, of course, I, I uh, participate in interviews like this. And, and uh, sometimes I, I have little classes so that I can, I can see that my, uh, what I tell, that I can see the reactions in people's faces because I don't always see that when, mm -hmm. when working online. I do have live sessions in classes, but... But, you know, there's, there's not so much live in, uh, when posting social media and such so that you can see the reactions. And, mm. and right. But so, that weekly blogging is the main, main thing for me. So weekly blogging and then you share your blog articles and more in the emails. And so in order to for making money from your art itself, um, is that... Are, you, are people on your email list buying your art? Do they buy yeah. originals? Do they buy prints? Are you selling cards and other things? Yeah, I, I do sell some cards and, and uh, some prints, but, uh, but mainly originals. Okay. Awesome. So, so originals is the number one seller for you and therefore the most profitable? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. 
So when you sell that, but you've already captured the original digitally, so you still are able to reproduce other things from that original, you know, that's otherwise gone forever, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I use use uh, all that in, in, in my marketing and such. And, and when I say that, that um, when selling art, the originals are the main thing, it's actually that I haven't, uh, I, I'm planning to, to uh, get more into printing. And I'm also planning to, to create a book about my pieces because I've got quite a lot of requests for that. But, uh, 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 you know, this year has been a big thing for me, has been to develop this coaching program. So yeah. I have had to put that aside for, for a while. Yeah. So tell us more about, because you have five on your site, right? Five different coaching programs or, or um, courses? I have several courses. I, have, I think I have more than 10 courses. Wow. Oh, wow. And, and and also some some workshops that I run uh, regularly, but that are not available as self self study. So I've created, I think I've created tens of courses during wow. the years. And uh, and my coaching program uh, will uh, is is uh, not a self study one that involves live sessions and such. So I run that uh, regularly. So the next time will be in the beginning of next year. Okay, so, so in January. Ended, uh, the group and, and then the next time will be in, the, in 2018. And tell us a little bit more, uh, excuse me, tell us a little bit more about that. Is it, um, how long is that coaching course and what does it involve? Yeah, that's uh, 12 weeks. Uh, so that's a step, six steps pro- program in 12 weeks. So that's two weeks for each step. And uh, we go, we start from a passion and then we end uh, f- uh, for courage and sharing and, and nice. all that. So I also include, a, a sec- I've also included a section for, for skills. And mm-hmm. that's not only about skills about creating art, because I've seen that for many artists, they neglect these skill things so that they think that they have to just create better and better art. And if they just become better and better in creating art, they will be more popular, more noticeable, that, that, uh, they, that somebody will dig them out of their homes and, and then the success will come. But uh, I think that uh, that uh, being an artist is also about understanding the wide skill set that you have to create. That that it's all also about connecting with with people. And for example, uh, with me, it's it's making videos and editing videos and understanding a kind of drama. I don't know how to say it, but. Yeah, the sense of drama when creating the video so that you, uh, um, you can watch that video without getting too bored. Yeah. <laughs> so that's essential skill. That's not only about, uh, you know, that I create some more pieces <laughs> in the videos. Uh, it's actually vice versa that I have to include a wide range of, of um uh, uh, kind of skill levels into into one class, so that those who are more advanced in imaginative level can learn more about technical skills and vice versa. Yeah. So um, I think there's there's a lot of skills that we need when we support ourselves, and that's also something that I've included in 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 the coaching program to make a kind of analysis what kind of skills you actually need and start uh, building those in a safe environment in that uh, group that's quite close-knit group when we when we are there for 12 weeks and we have uh, four live sessions also so so that's that's also something that's good that you have a safe environment to start building that uh, wide skill set. 
So you're saying that you have four live sessions, so that's online through a medium like this. Yeah. And, and so then it's you. Do, are the students also visual, uh, visible, or is it just you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a hot seats for. Okay. For oh, awesome. Participants. Yeah. And do you have a about how many students do you typically um, enroll in that in that twelve week? Typically fifteen. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and, but I give personal advice for everyone during the live session and uh, also do, uh, in the discussion group that I have Facebook, uh, the discussion group in Facebook. So I give personalized advice for, for everybody. So that's, that's like an incredible workload. Like you're not only are you doing your weekly blog post, your weekly newsletter, and it's not just like, hey, I'm going to toss a blog up online. It's you have in-depth informational blog content, which takes a lot of time to produce. And then you have 15 students that throughout various stages of the year that you're coaching and helping and doing sessions with. What kind of, do you have anything or is this all you? Do you have help? Do you have as needed help? How, how does that work for you? Yeah, um, the most of the things is uh, me, if you think about it as um, somebody who performs mm -hmm. in, in that way. But then, of course, uh, my husband helps me in bookkeeping and also in, in some practical stuff, like if I need a new microphone or something, I, I ask him to study what's the best, <laughs> best yeah. one. And, and and that kind of background stuff my husband's brilliant with that nice and uh but i think that it's not only that that um i also have a community that supports me in a in in mental way that i get mental support for mm -hmm. from. and i belong to tara gentiles um gentiles uh co-commercial community i belong to leaders circle there and uh, that's that's a circle of small business owners mostly digital business owners which is also important to me mm -hmm. that i connect with other digital business owners because i think that it's so different to sell services online than than to sell physical items yes online. yeah and that that community i'm not always really really talky or active there but it's really important part of me encouraging myself and getting encouragement if i get bad days and also to raise the bar in my business that that if i have noticed that if i only connect with artists then the business side of stuff easily gets neglected Definitely. and that I easily forget that I'm also a business owner. Right. And, uh, yeah, I think that we have to also find the leader in us when we are supporting ourselves that that, that leadership actually uh, keeps, keeps me doing all that. Yeah. Um, that's where I've got, got help. I've also uh, gone through Tara, Tara's uh, coaching program a few years ago. And, and during that time, I really understood that, that artists need, to, need leadership to, and that's also an integral part of my coaching program, mm -hmm. for people to find a leader in them so that it's not only the specialist that's, that's creating art, it's also... Uh, a leader that's encouraging and supporting all that. I love yeah. that. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it's so important. We're big on that. And the concept is no matter how good you are, uh, how, whether or not you think you've arrived, mm -hmm. you know, at the place where you want to be with your art. And you posted something about this recently on your timeline. In fact, the concept of, you know, you're with each painting, you're discovering you know where your art is and what your art is you know it's a process it's a journey um, yeah. and that's why it's so important to continue our edu our own education um, so even while you're teaching others then you are still looking to others to be taught you know mm -hmm. and to learn from and like mm -hmm. you said, to connect with for us we're um, more on for, for me in particular my creativity really is more business creating the business uh, and writing and so you know that one, that's why the I create daily includes entrepreneurs because 
building a business is creating something from nothing. Mm, it's like building a painting, mm. you know, and if we create a painting but have no structure for sharing mm. it with the world, then it's wonderful for us, but it doesn't live out its potential. Mm -hmm. So I really liked what you said about finding the leader because it occurs to me that, you know, one of the things that many artists might have trouble with, it, it doesn't seem like you do. You're very disciplined, it seems like, and you have your daily structure in place. But for those who struggle with discipline and, you know, doing the daily art or setting up the structures to help them do that, one of the concepts is rather than, you know, just do the hard thing or just be disciplined, the concept is find your inner leader, you know, Ooh. find <laughs> the leader within you that will lead you to do what you know you need to do. Definitely. I love what you're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, when I, when I left my day job and I started working for myself, uh, I realized that I'm a really bad boss. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of manager, but I try to manage everything. I had these huge lists that I had to do. And the longer the lists got, the less I got done. Mm. <laughs> Then I, then I thought that, oh, no, the things are not better at all. Uh, even if I've left my day job, that what should I do? That uh, I know I'm a really, really productive person if I get the motivation to do it. And I, I didn't realize what's, what's the lacking motivation here because I felt that I'm really motivated. But then this boss always appeared and showed all these lists and how right. far behind I am. And, and then uh, one day I told myself that if you know what you want, want me to do, then do it yourself. I'm, yeah. going, to, I'm going out with my dogs. And yeah. I realized that that's actually exactly the same situation I had sometimes had in my, in my day jobs, that when somebody mm. tells you so accurately what you should do, it's actually really discouraging. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, then during that coaching program with Tara, I, I realized that I have to persuade myself. I have to talk gently. And, uh, within a, and one secret, uh, when you ask me about the daily routines and such, I don't like to create very stiff daily routines because mm. uh, the freedom that I have uh, within one week is the freedom that my creative side can take. So, so my leadership part plans, uh, they makes bigger plans and shows the direction but gives freedom for creativity to solve that problems in a way that, that feels good in, in, on that day. So that's one, one secret for productivity is that if I don't feel like editing videos today, I know I can postpone it for tomorrow mm -hmm. and do something else. And it's actually mm -hmm. surprising how some things that sound really are really boring are really motivating to do if you're a bit tired or something, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then on the other day, days when you feel you're really creative, then it's amazing how much you can do in one day, all the inventive stuff that you can fit in there. So every morning I wake up, I try to listen to myself and I, I try to find ways to persuade myself. And sometimes it can be as simple as I listen to business podcasts because when I listen to those, I remind myself that this is business yeah. and that I have to uh, get the discipline to do that, to get the motivation to do that. And these kind of, um, kind of, they are kind of, whispers that I'm whispering to myself they, they are not uh, kind of orders so mm -hmm. I might say to myself that it's okay you can take one hour and do something else whatever you want to for example you can meet for one hour if you if you if you want to if you don't feel feel like working but listen to a business podcast while you're doing do yeah. that yeah yeah it usually takes like 10 minutes and I'm 
I can't knit now. I have things to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it, often it's just being gentle towards yourself. Too. That makes sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. So speaking of the podcast, what, do you have any favorites that um, that you care to share that inspire you? Yeah, I actually have a couple of favorites. Uh, uh, one is Tara Chantal's uh, Profit, Power and Pursuit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that because Tara is so easy to listen to. She's so fluent and also she asks questions that are really interesting. I think she's also a really good interviewer not only a good business coach. And uh, I also like Creative Live in general. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it has uh, played an important role within those nine months when I was planning to leave my day job. I watched Creative Live almost every evening. It's a bit pathetic, but <laughs> no, you, it's know, you, can, you can watch business courses for free there if you, if you just say uh, if you, when they run on air, so so that was really important. Uh, in because we, I live in Finland, the, the courses started seven, uh, seven o'clock in the evening, so it was quite handy. So yes. uh, and, and then then one podcast that Eva has introduced me is uh, is this um, fa- uh, fancy mm-hmm. artist podcast, which is um, fantastic week. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I like to listen to that when I create art, when I paint. Mm. And, and that kind of builds, uh, builds the gap between business and creating in an in a inspiring way. And I especially like that because I'm not uh, a fancy, a pure uh, fancy artist. I, I really get inspired by that uh, because um, often... I get more inspiration from things that are not directly related to me. Mm-hmm. But I have to work in my brain that, oh, that, that's, that one said like that. How can I translate that to my art or to my business? So I often find the inspiration, uh, those that, more inspirational, those things that come out of the field that I'm, currently working in that's so important Uh, that's such a good point for just creativity in general for the creative side for the business side all of it because so often we get our best ideas when we're kind of just launched outside of the box that we're in and that we generally create in and sort of like the steve jobs calligraphy thing who would have thought a calligraphy class would have um, you know, catalyzed his idea on how fonts are used online now, you know, and so it's just that concept of going outside to find something. Yeah, it's in alignment with the universe, you know, as the, the cow doesn't drink milk to produce milk, the, uh, the tree doesn't, you know, grow in leaves to produce leaves and bark, you know, so it's yeah. like the way we're constructed as human beings, we absorb and we assimilate from the universe, essentially, of, of around us um, mm. and our environment and even beyond. We can be more creative when we go beyond, like you were saying, our immediate environment, mm-hmm. and especially the small box that we might occupy on a day-in and day-out basis. So mm. that's, that makes perfect sense. So is there any book that you're reading now or that you like to recommend as one that has inspired you as an artist? Well, I'm really bad at reading books nowadays because I have so so little time for that I and, oh, and I, in, the, in the evening when I take the book I fall asleep yeah. almost immediately Me but too. I'm currently reading this this book um, which oh is, lovely um, Bright Earth by Philip Bright Ball Bright Earth by P- Philip Ball and it's about color chemistry science and uh, art history and how artists used, have used pigments and color through the ages and it's it's very inspiring i'm reading it in small portions because i feel like that when i read a small paragraph i have so many new ideas ideas yeah but in general Mm. uh i would say that i i don't have any books that have been so important to me but i would recommend creative life because yeah that's one thing that uh, if you if you think about 
that you want to build a business from your creative thing, then watching a couple of classes there don't do any harm. And if you don't have the persistence to watch any of those classes, then you probably don't have the persistence to do the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. They're so clear. So that's, that has been really inspiring to me uh, back then. Uh, maybe not now, not now anymore, because that, that's quite basic information there, uh, more, many of the courses. But it was extremely inspiring to me, especially the audience. Mm. And there was this one class that I was watching. And I was thinking about, can I do this jump? Can I do, do this jump? And then I started Googling and I started Googling those students because they have live audience there, mm -hmm. most of their business classes. And I think that's the best thing there. And I started Googling those students. Had they done that? And almost everyone had done that by Google, mm -hmm. when, I, when I searched them by Googling. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, yeah, I can do that. I can do nice. that. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I found even more interesting than the teaching. <laughs> right. Fantastic. Well, and yeah, we love Creative Live, Chase Jarvis, and mm -hmm. we listen to lot, lots of podcasts as well. So we all look forward to tuning in to Tara's as a new one for us. Before, we've already taken more of your time than we said we were going to because it's been so much fun learning more about you and your business. Before we ask you the last question, I did just want to come back to, you mentioned your husband and how wonderful it is to have a symbiotic team mm -hmm. where your, you know, your strengths uh, support each other and their different strengths. Um, and I saw his incredible woodwork where yeah. he created wonderful tools for you yeah. to use in your art from a storage thing for your paintbrushes to a resting place for your paintbrushes uh, to a box, you know, for holding your paints and things. So that's really sweet. He's quite the artist himself then. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's an engineer too, but, uh, but he <laughs> understands a lot about visuals nowadays. He has yeah. had a teacher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wonderful. He's had a lot together. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Open. Yeah. Well, w in closing, uh, we're obviously going to link all your sites, um, your website and everything that people should definitely check out. But in closing, do you have any parting advice for the, any, for the audience? Yeah, I think that for, for those who dream about, uh, about having their dream job in art, I think that for those I would, um, if, I should if I could have one advice, it would be about being generous. Mm -hmm. That uh, when you think about sharing, you think that the first thing you think that can I do that? And then the next thing you think is, is do I give too much away for free? And uh, I, I, don't, I don't really think that there's, um, uh, there, there should be such a strict boundary in that, that uh, I think that if you're generous and if you try to do your best to make your work so that it benefits other people, then you are bound to succeed, succeed. And, and if so, so that's, that's kind of moving the focus from yourself to others, but in a empowering way, if you understand what I mean, yeah. it's not about about stalking what did somebody else like liked me or what did somebody else say about me or things like that but more about what can I do for other people and how can I make my work better so that other people can benefit more of it mm. of course you have to also get your income and, and take care of that but uh, uh, if you're starting, uh, then uh, actually there might not be much that you have that you can really sell. That, that what you know so far is, uh, is something that um, you have to build more. Mm. 
de develop more. And when you do that development with other people, then it will be successful. But you, you can, when you, when you observe the reactions from other people and when you ask questions from other people and when you provide true value to other people, then you will find out where they really want you to be and where, what do, you, do they want to uh, get from you. And then if you are uh, further away in your path, if you're already uh, supporting yourself or if, you, if you're almost supporting yourself, uh, one thing that I would recommend is to have um, how to fascinate test. You can, I think that you can get it for free in howtofascinate.com. Hmm. And that's the test that really changed the way I looked at myself, the result, because it's not your basic psychology test. It te it's a test about what, what fascinates others in you. Is this um, Sally Hog Hogshead? Yes. 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 How to fascinate. So Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that was groundbreaking to me mm. that, uh, that I realized that all the things that uh, were actually negative sides in me when I was uh, in, in uh, my day job were actually the things that are positive in me when I work as an entrepreneur. No. And that was a big a mind shift that all the things that I thought that I, I thought that I should not talk so much and that uh, I should not be so dramatic and uh, and things like that that uh, when I got the results from how to fascinate test they listed all those as as the things that I should do more yeah sure. <laughs> That was that was groundbreaking to me yeah. that, that there was uh, somebody, even if it was only a kind of a report, that uh, that kind of uh, gave acceptance uh, to the genuine part of myself, and that was that was a really big thing. And I'm sorry, I, can I, you sorry to interrupt. That gave acceptance to the what part of yourself? Um, maybe the part of myself that I had tried to hide mm. all the time because I thought that that's not appropriate. Which was the word you used? And was, I was missing the word that you used. The cheering part of yourself or the... Oh, I can't... I can't that's okay. Remember. That's okay. Yeah. Well, just, you know, in the transcript doesn't catch you it. Know, but my test result, it was, I want God. And, and that was not at all something that I hadn't thought about at all. And that's about uh, combining prestige and quality with innovation. Mm, and, yeah, that's what you've and, done. And it, I felt that always when I worked uh, in my day job, I was too quality oriented. And now the test said that I should focus on the quality. And uh, that was really a big relief to me. And another thing was that I was always uh, generating new ideas before yeah. other people had time to react. Yeah. And now I was finally free to, to put all those ideas into, into rea reality. So uh, I, I was really liberated by that test. So I, I'm really so grateful I want to mention it here. Yeah, I'm glad you did that. You, it gave you permission to be yourself, and then you created the environment in which you thrive. You built yeah, the environment yeah. that, that you belong in, you yeah. know, and that's what our goal is, basically yeah. what we need to do. And if we're not thriving where we are, then chances are our strengths are not a match for that environment, and we need to create yeah. or find the environment that is. That's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this has been so fun getting to meet you, Pivey. Thank you so much for taking your time and sharing your story. Uh, we look forward to sharing this with our audience. We'll be launching the podcast in November and we'll let you know when it airs. Thank you. Thank you so much. It okay. was so, so good to talk to you. It was so Same much here. fun. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.